introduce. The team at Rapala have been slaving away the past couple of months on the sand flats here to get the most lifelike Yabby impersonation, the Crush City Imposter. So make sure you get down to your local Rapala stockers, grab a pack before they run out and crush them. Good evening, welcome. Another ABT Live. Allegedly, it's number 44. Nicole, behind the scenes, is it correct? Number 44, this one? There you go. Uh, welcome. Uh, doing it myself tonight. Nicole's running all of the hardware behind the scenes there. Um, feeling a bit under the weather. I don't know if it's COVID. I don't know if it's just life. But she... It's not COVID. Well, no, it's not COVID. <laughs> She's laughing at that now. Um, but we have got a few good stories to you tonight, and it's basically all about the bass. Uh, we've got our one, two, third and fourth rounds of the 13 Fishing Bass Pro Series coming up. They are both river rounds in northern New South Wales. As usual, been a bit of spice added, a little bit of rain uh, last week. Uh, so the rivers have come up and they've come back down again. And we've got uh, three stories tonight. We've got um, uh, Mick Horn from 13 Fishing going through some of his experience down the Clarence on the pre-fish, some of the baits he'll be throwing. We got Joey Urquhart from Casino uh, Outdoors and Disposals um, taking us through all the dirty water baits that you might not be familiar with and telling you what to refine into and bring along. And uh, we have the AOY leader, Braden Shu, uh, to tell us how his uh, quest for winning AOY this year is going. Going pretty well, actually. He's sitting top at the moment. Speaking of top, look at our first comment that we had. Was it on Facebook or YouTube? YouTube. On YouTube was Maddie Langford. Hadn't seen Maddie at the top of many things this year. He's not leading AOY, hasn't won any events. But Maddie, you're the first commenter, mate. So good on you, pal. Pat on the back. All, all of his mates give him a hard time there. We know that Maddie doesn't know how to not win. It's very uncomfortable to him. So uh, good to see you first on the comments there. If you are commenting, let us know where you're from. I've got a. It's not the world's biggest prize pack tonight, but there's a couple of really cool duo baits there. Um, like the ones that the guys caught all those massive brim on down at Tassie. Uh, some Bait Junkie and Z-Man Soft Plastics there. Tell us where you're from. Give us a postcode, give us a suburb, give us a state, give us a country. Uh, we will get that prize back out by the end of the, uh, the show to someone who Nicole chooses, either on Facebook or on YouTube. She'll pick one of the two places you can leave a comment and she will pick someone out. Uh, as always, nice comments for the producer get you a long way. So whack some of them down there as well and see if you can bribe Nicole into giving you a prize pack that's worth at least 80 bucks, plus 10 bucks to post it. So, uh, so that's happening tonight as well. Um, look, it's not all about the bass. We have had brim events in Tassie. Uh, all of the coverage will be in the next uh, Fishing Monthly magazine. The highlights videos are up on the YouTube page and our Facebook page. And it was pretty epic. We worked with Hobie to deliver two kayak events and three uh, boat events. The Hue and River, big thumbs up. Well done, Uncle Wallace and Mark Lennox. Wally Fay won his first ever trophy. Good work, Wall. And the zero prize money that went with it uh, was fantastic. Uh, we had a couple of Tassie locals won. Grant Stingle, Isaac Harris won the boater divisions. And the non-boater divisions, a couple of mainlanders, Jesse Roten and uh, John o. Fitzgibbon taking some trophies from the back of the boat. So uh, it's a fantastic Tassie tour. Um, Brim turns to WA. Um, another couple of weeks, we've got the Albany round there. Um, 
Interesting brim in WA. I had I had a phone call on the weekend from the leader of the AOY in the brim side, Mark Healy, sussing me about what the Blackwood River's like. Uh, I'm no, I'm doing a lightning trip over to the Blackwood because it's such a good place to fish, and I hopefully I talk Mark into coming across and giving it a go as well. Heaps of brim in that joint. Great, very natural riverbanks, plenty of fish in it, and the WA guys are a great group of guys. The guys from Water there that help us run the tournaments. Looking forward to catching up with all of them over there. Um, Entries for the Bass Tournaments. We're currently at 45 boats for the Clarence and 40 boats for the Richmond. So the payouts are going to be great. This is the Maui Jim Clarence check that's going to be here. What sort of payout, Nicole? Maybe three and a half, four grand, something like that. First prize. Around that. Three and a half. Three and a half ish. And then the Atomic Round at, uh, there we go. Atomic Round is at, um, on the Richmond River. Uh, that'll be slightly less, maybe uh, low threes, first place for that. So someone's going to win these fellas. Always good to have a novelty check in the garage. Um, interestingly, the briefings are at two really, really good bass stores. Um, the Clarence one is the Graft and Firearms. Dan and the guys from there have this rabbit warren of the store, which has a heap of awesome stuff in it. Um, we'll be doing the briefing there before dark, so uh, just make sure you check the info sheets about when the briefing is. Uh, the Richmond River, the Atomic Round is at Joey's at, uh, at uh, Casino Outdoors. Uh, Mick Starkey's buying everyone pizzas for dinner for that one. Nicole will let all the competitors know that that's coming up as well. But uh, Atomic Spied Pizzas and Joey flogging you all the baits that you need to catch fish in that dirty water is going to make for a great couple of briefings and a great few events. Um, public service announcement for guys fishing the Clarence. Had a call a couple of days ago from an old ABT competitor that, uh, that's related to working on the ferries and he said there's going to be a couple of guys on the cruise working the ferries who are the guys that will call the cops if you're fishing the lines. So we've had to make the executive decision with ABT that for this event on the Clarence, you're not going to be able to fish the Ulmara or the Lawrence ferries. Um, it's just going to be a 60 metre exclusion zone around those lines. So I'm sorry if your pre-fish involved working out that that's where the fish were and that's where you're going to win it. Um, with the ABT rules, if you're asked to leave an area, do it. Normally it's no worries to fish it, but we have had the word that there's going to be a couple... There will be incidents if there are people fishing around those ferry lines. So again, we'll bring that up at the briefing. I think, Nicole, you're going to bring that up in the text message that we send out to all the, the anglers there as well. But it's, uh, that only happened yesterday. So I thought we'd announce that there tonight and, uh, and maybe have a reconsideration of your plans if the ferry lines were, uh, were part of your plans there. Were they? Tyson's already uh, upset. <laughs> so, well, hey, I'm telling everyone at the same time. So, uh, I'm sorry if you pre fished it. Hey, no, I'm not, because you could have whacked the hell out of him in the pre fish now, and you would have had a great time. Let's, uh, enough of me talking. Let's go to our first story tonight. Uh, it's Mick Horn. I caught up with him right here in the ABT offices to talk about all things 13 fishing and Rapala for these bass events. All right, here he is, the heavy hitter of the Rapala crew. And that pun was intended because the Crush City Heavy Hit is one of your babies, isn't it, Mick Horn? Yeah, it was. Um, that was probably one of the most exciting things with Crush City. It was like that development of it all. And I love my jack fishing and that reaction, you know, that big body roll of a plastic, you know, that was one of the key you, features. Yeah, mm -hmm. I wanted to wanted to get the action right. And, yeah, so the Heavy Hitter was – that was in, in the um, – the office, we've all got names. I'm called the heavy hitter, as you can see with you got, the shirt on. That's right. This is your party shirt from Baratur. Wasn't yeah, it, it was. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was a it was an awesome experience. Like obviously working with um, the Crush City team and everyone in the office, like designing those lures. Like personally, it's, it was actually a pretty cool achievement. So to be called the heavy hitter or to make the lure, bit of both, bit of both. Yeah. So just so look, we've got sidetracked here. Go through the office. Who's who? Okay, obviously I'm the heavy hitter. Uh, Jess, she's the imposter because she's... She's a girl. She, yeah, she, yeah, she's one of the girls. <laughs> uh, Mitchie, who you all know Mitchie, um, he is the suspect. The um, usual suspect, yes. Yep, Matt, our marketing manager, he's the jerk. And our boss, Timmy, he's the creeper. And yeah. that suits all of us. All of us are well suited to those names. Is he the creeper because his HR plan is come and sit on daddy's lap? Uh, I think that's one of the main reasons, yeah. <laughs> We're not here to talk about the Rapala office politics and everyone's nicknames, although they do suit. You're going to have to put more staff on when you make more models, though, I think. Yeah, 100% we will. You have to get Otzi a nickname. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
But we're talking about the 13 Fishing Bass Pro Series. Mm -hmm. We've got the two awesome river rounds happening now. And again, if you haven't followed the series, we started with the two events down in Victoria, Glen Maggie and Blue Rock. Um, we have the two river rounds now in New South Wales, Clarence Richmond. Mm -hmm. And we finish off with two Queensland dam rounds, Somerset Wyvernhoe. So a massive variety of fishing across all of the tours. You know, local tours don't have that much variety, but man, mm -hmm. the 13 Fishing Bass, seri Bass Pro Series has it all. Yeah, for sure. And and the good thing about it, it sort of, it doesn't sort of suit just one person who's into dam fishing. You know, it just goes to show some of those guys that are versatile across the whole three arenas, so. They're going to do the best, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, 100%. So. Now, the, um, we always believe sponsor karma is a thing. Um, you know, throwing the sponsor's baits in the naming events is always a good way to go. So it's 13 fishing is the naming. And you've got some baits here. Yep. There's only one 13 fishing bait I see here, mate, yeah, the yeah. old Jabberjaw. Yeah, no, that's a bit of a favourite. And, and like, because we've just obviously just had that rain down in that area, you know, the water's going to be a little bit discoloured. So that reaction bite's going to be one of the key features in both events. Um, and the Jabber Jaw has a pretty unique thing. It's got a metal bib and it's actually got metal cheeks in it. So yep. um, as it goes through the water, it's sort of a cross between a crankbait and a chatterbait. So it actually chatters uh, the metal the metal bib and the metal cheeks make it chatter. So um, that's a pretty cool thing. So being in that dirty water, that little bit extra noise and that metallic sound uh, obviously might get those bigger bites and the spino karma so uh, yes I must admit I've got a few of these packed in um, mm -hmm. I do like the idea of those in the dirty water it's all about the bass finding the bait isn't yeah, it it's 100%. like they, if they find it they're pretty ravenous they'll, yeah, yeah. they'll eat it they just got to find it in the dirty water yeah yeah you're obviously a hard body man because I said grab a few props for this one and it's like everything's a hard body here yeah. I love this bait here this is yeah. my favourite yeah 100% like obviously you you probably uh, made that lure even even better by winning the Bass Open last year up in the uh, the Esk River. Um, but again, it's another one of those cool little baits. It's timber, different acoustics underwater. Silence. Yes, but also it's got that uh, square build sort of thing, so it bounces off structure really good. So. Yeah, and it's slightly buoyant too, so if you hit a snag, I just slacken off on it, just backs off the snag yeah, and away it goes. Um, and choosing that really bright colour, obviously, this weekend with that discoloured water. Yep. So that's the Shadrap Elite 55. You do make a bigger Elite than that too, though, Yeah, we you? do. We've got a 75, and um, that's one of my sort of favourite, um, one of my jack lures I really like on bridge pylons and stuff yep. like that. Third one we got here. It's a pretty, it's like, I suppose guys have been using this as a stalwart for the last four or five years. Yeah. Tell us what it is. And, again, it's... Uh, Another reaction style bait, it's the uh, BX Brat. Uh, the six foot, dives down six foot, but it's just one of those, again, a square bill, but it's got plenty of action in the water. So, as you are saying before, you, you want something that the bass are going to find. That thing's got a lot of, lot of it moves a lot of water underneath. Yep. So, it's, it's yep. going to create that vibration for those fish. Because I think a lot of the fish this weekend are going to be structure orientated. So... You know, casting that near any sort of structure, the fish will definitely find it. So now you're one of the anglers that got a sneaky pre-fish in down there, and uh, I've probably been a little bit uh, uh, struck by the fact that the the rain coming down yeah. the rivers is going to probably juggle it up a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, how much do you think you learned of the pre-fish is going to apply in the tournament? Uh, a little bit. Obviously, I didn't. I would sort of fished. I, I really like fishing the edges on the Clarence. Um, hopefully, those fish. As I said, they're going to obviously stick to structure now. We've got a fair bit of water moving down there, um, so that kind of thing I'm not I'm not too concerned about. And I did fish a little bit of deep water stuff. You know, again it was all structure orientated, so reefy yep. sort of areas. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm sort of still confident I can catch fish. You know, whether the fish are in the area where I fished last two weeks ago. Um, Pre-fish you know, day, I'll tell us. Yeah, hundred percent. So look. I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to it, you know, like um, whether there's dirty water or whatever, um, someone's always going to find the fish and someone's going to like, you know, get a decent sort of bag in yep. that system. Yeah. What do you reckon about day to day? Do the fish down there cop a touch up day to day? Could you go back to the same fish the next day and whack them again? Uh, if, if they're on structure, probably not, because, you know, some of those fish might, if they're in some of the uh, 
creeks or the rivers on some, off some off the main river, you know, if they cop a bit of a paste and for a pre-fish and then a day, it might they might struggle on the third day. Um, if you're in the main river, I think they could turn over a little bit. Obviously, yep. they're going to turn over a lot better. And if if you get further down the system and you're fishing some of that reefy area, yeah, hundred percent those fish will. I think they back up. yeah they should yep. be fine. Yeah, that's awesome, mate. I'm not going to ask you any more secret tips apart from the fact that. Uh, are you going to give us any secrets about some new stuff coming out? Like, I know you're always working on stuff out the back there, secret stuff that I don't even I'll get to see. Mm. Um, what's your level of excitement with what's coming out? Yeah, no, it's it's really good. Again, it's another one of those projects that we've we've been working on for the last sort of 12 months as well. Um, and it has been some of the lures that I have been pre-fishing with. So I've got a bit of confidence in a couple of them, and some of them are a bit left field to what you think you'd be throwing for bass. But... Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. If you know, if the fish do what they have done a couple of weeks ago on the Richmond, I pre-fished that and I caught them that way, and that was pretty dirty water. Um, yeah, I'm really I'm looking forward to see if it actually comes off. So now, what uh, what about uh, in the 13 fishing stable? I know you launched your range of rods last year that are pretty popular out there. Have you got any new and exciting 13 fishing rods coming out? We we're actually working on that. They're not going to be out for a little while yet. Um, we're obviously working with, because of Rapal obviously just bought all the 13 fishing. Yeah, you know, 100% now. Yeah, so we own 13 fishing 100%. We're working with the guys in the States and that to sort of go through another range of rods that are going to suit us perfectly here with the right guides and all that sort of stuff. So that's not like in the near future, but they're, they're definitely not, plans. Not after this year? No, no it's going to be further on down. Um, so it'll be more into next year that that's going to happen. And give us an update on the uh, the 13 bait casters as well. Very distinctive colours. Yep. I love using them. I've got a whole set on my bass rods that I love using. Um, no, nothing exciting coming up in there's a cup. There's a cup. There is a couple of um, reels we have seen. Uh, I think we've got a new one. Uh, my, but actually it's not too far away. It's a replacing uh, the OTX. It's going to be a Modus TX. Um, that's I think that's not far uh, from hitting the shelves. Um, there is a couple other ones which we're working on as well with with the guys in the states. Um, but currently we've still got the same range. Yep, too easy. So got a little bit of info out of Mick. Not much. I know he's going to get fired if he tells us too much. <laughs> uh, you won't get fired if you bring home a trophy from the Clarence, mate. And I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how this all plays out. We're staying in the haunted house down there in Grafton, mate. Yeah. Explain to the viewers what that joint's like. Yeah, it's 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 something from the uh, 60s or 70s, you know, all the furniture and what the 1860s. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, oh, and there's a million bedrooms and yeah, some of the creepy stuff. nooks in there. Yeah, hundred percent. So yeah. we've got uh, young Harry with us, and we'll we'll, we'll scare him. Yeah, we'll give him the the dodgy room upstairs somewhere. The last youngster that got scared in there was Tommy Wood, and he was peeking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So there you go. Hopefully the Haunted House comes good again this year. Um, 13 Fishing, thank you for being naming sponsor of the Bass Pro Series. It's such a diverse series. Um, after this weekend, well, this, this week coming, we're going to have a fair idea who's uh, who's tying it up for AOY. You know, Braden Shu from Dial we're leading at the moment, but mm -hmm. your guys, you know, Matty, um, Matt Langford, etc., they're up there. Yeah. So, you know, it's going to be a real race this year. Yep. And uh, who are um, you? you? You cheering for the 13 Fishing guys, obviously. Yeah, 100%. I will be <laughs> Matty and Mick. Um, and look, they're both pretty versatile in both the dam and the, and the rivers, as as is Braden. But um, yeah, obviously, we'd like to see uh, Matty or Mick up there somewhere. There you go. You heard it first from Mickey Horn. Now uh, we're going to see how he does on the live scoreboards for those two events. I'm Greg with PowerPole. I just want to show you what our trolling motor is capable of. We just want to give you the confidence that you know if you get in, you can get out with our trolling motor pulling this big 20-foot Skeeter boat, going through the cattails, the matted up mother-in-law tongues. Our trolling motor runs on just about everything but dry ground. Most trolling motors wrap it all up around the hub, which stops them, ours doesn't stop. Nothing's wrapped around the prop. That's amazing there. There you go, that ad there was from our great ABT sponsor, PowerPole. I'm pretty sure that both of the big boats we're giving away this year, those 498 uh, alloy crafts will have a power pole on them or in them when we give them away at the end of each year. Um, don't know if you saw the news, but uh, PowerPole actually released a pump called the PowerPole One. 
uh, during the week. It was uh, instead of having two power poles run by two separate installations of pumps, they now make one pump that you can run both power poles on. So it takes a smaller footprint of your boat. I assume it's going to be a little bit cheap because you're only buying one pump instead of two. So that's pretty cool. Other thing I did today was I uh, did a software update on my power pole move. Um, pretty sure they've addressed that problem with when you're trying to drive the motor real shallow and it's trying to put itself into a stowage position. Uh, they've addressed that with a, a software update. So I'm looking forward to uh, on the weekend uh, getting into some real shallow nasty country and uh, checking out that update to make sure it's uh, it's all happened. As usual, software update. It's really easy for your power poles, both your poles, your move, your whatevers. You just hit a button on your phone and five minutes later it's all updated. So dumb old fishermen like me can do it pretty easily and that's pretty cool. Speaking of sponsors, the Clarence River Round is the Maui Gym Round. Really popular promotion we've been doing this year is uh, we have loaner Maui Gyms at all events. We have around, how many glasses? 20 sets, Nicole, maybe? More than that. 20, 30 sets? Yeah. Um, so you can pick a Maui Gym frame that you like and possibly even a lens, I like the HT high transmission lenses that you like, um, and you can take them out fishing for a day. All you do at the end of the day, get your Maui Gym cleaning kit, clean it all up so the next guy is going to get a nice, uh, nice uh, set of glasses to put on, and you can take them out and try before you buy. So if you want to try a couple of different lenses over two days, come see us at the briefing and you can do that. But one of the sets of lenses that I've been really loving and that anglers have been asking a lot about are the magnified lenses. So again, don't know if you can see it here or not, but these Maui gyms have got the, uh, the magnifiers on the inside here. You can see down at the bottom, you can actually see that in the shot. Um, they're either 1.5, 2 or 2.5 two times the magnification. And we have three sets of those here that we're going to add to those loaner kits. So if you want to try this, uh, the sets of magnified Maui's where you see normally at the front, but then when you're looking downwards and tying a knot, oh, I can, I can all of a sudden see my two pound line again, um, and you're getting old like me, then these are really good. I recommend them, but you can try before you buy. Um, I think they're about $50 dearer than a normal set of lenses. So if you've got your normal frames and set of lenses you like, the magnification option's about 50 bucks more. Uh, it was when I ordered on the website anyway. So we've got three pairs of those of three different magnifications for you to try at the Clarence. If you want to come and see Nicole, she will sign some of those out too. You've just got to sign them back at the end of the day. If you don't bring them back, trouble. Trouble from Nicole. How much trouble? Lots. Lots of trouble. Uh, shout out to Big Kev, our first ever super thanks on ABT Live. Dropped in five bucks to the donation tin there. Um, thanks, Big Kev. I know you watch my live streams as well, mate, so a big shout out to you there. Um, you know, look, ABT members pay a membership that fish the tournament. We're not begging for money on, on the live show. We're just trying to give you the information. But that's a uh, big thanks there. And it's, if it was a strategy to help win a comp, and I mean, to win this, might be five bucks well spent. Who knows? Um, let's go to our next story. Joey Urquhart. This is the longest of the stories tonight because Joey just loves talking about catching bass. Joey Urquhart, uh, we all remember him from the crazy legs capture of that uh, of that giant bass that got him to within 10 grams of winning the Bass Cat in 2017. Let's check out what he's got to say about some dirty water bassing. All right, here he is, the champion of the dirty water bassing in the northeast coast of New South Wales, Joey Urquhart. Mate, your two favourite species, I reckon, are bass in the river and catching big dewies off the wall when the floods are coming through, mate. And uh, when you get a bit of rain, you can do both of these things in your part of the world. Welcome to ABT Live. Yeah, thanks for having me, mate. And uh, you couldn't have had the pre-fish ban at a better time because it's been dewfish heaven the last week. So it's been unreal. I haven't had to worry about chasing bass, just been catching dew. It's been good. Um, you make the lures to catch your dew too, don't you? You make the big uh, the, the big uh, wooden baits, that the, the like the old chair legs that they used to throw around in the northern rivers there, mate. You make a flash new version of it, don't you? Yeah, and uh, they don't need to be real flash, that's the thing. Throw it the right place. The amount of mullet down there yesterday, uh, it's a real testament to how healthy the systems are at the moment. And that comes all the way up the system for the bass as well. Um, the mullet were ready to run. We got a flood and they're all at the mouth of the river and they are everywhere. So, yeah, it's really cool to see just... How, yeah, the bass fishing's been a bit ordinary just this, this week, obviously, if you were trying to fish, it would have been a little bit tough. But, hey, other things really bloom when things like this happen. So it's just all the part of how the ecosystem works. Now, let's have a look. We got uh, we got the uh, 13 Fishing Bass Pro Series event in your part of the world. You know, fam a famous river. We've had some great events there in the past. We always love reminding you of, I don't know how many years ago it was now, where you lost a boat by 10 grams. It was about $50,000 or $60,000 between first and second. Mate, how many years ago was that now? Uh, 2017, I'm pretty sure it was. So what are we... 
what's that? Seven years ago or something. Six nah, it was ago. longer than that, mate. No, it was 2017 because my young bloke was only just born. So There yeah. you go. All right. So, okay, well, we've still got a few more years of rubbing that in before the decade limit passes. Yeah, and, uh, and look, we always know when we go to the Richmond, it's such a long narrow river like there are so many options you got the wilsons you got bunga walburn you got the main river um if you want to be crazy and run to immigrant creek you got that like it literally has any any amount of options and we're going to have a probably mid 40s boat field there and those boats will disappear in that length of river won't they mate yeah they sure will um like you said there's so much to fish um this we may be a little bit limited this time like i'd say our, our arena may be just brought back in a little bit um just because of the water that'll be sort of worth fishing yep. um but yeah like you could not see another boat all day which is unreal um tell me many arenas you can go to in australia and fish a tournament where you can run 120 k's each way like there's not really anywhere you can do that so we are really spoiled um I've heard a lot of the guys in the States talk about this, some of those big lakes. It's like, hey, if you like throwing a jig or you like throwing a crankbait or whatever, there's a part, a section of that river where you can throw what you want. Um, there's fish in that river that will eat what you want them to eat. It's not like you go to St. Clair and you have to have a cut down two inch plastic to catch them on. Like if you want to catch them on a jackal, there's a part of that river you can do it on. Or if you want to go throw a top water, there's somewhere in that river you can throw it. So I think it's a really versatile system. And um, it's very much like the the Clarence, uh, essentially. It's just our tributaries sort of go up a little bit higher, where a lot of those Clarence tributaries are a lot lower, so a lot more um, tidal influence. Yeah, I think in the Clarence, you're, you're limited these sort of rock bars which stop you getting up. The, you know, up past Coppernost is pretty hard. And Whereas the Richmond man, you can keep on going till, the, till you're in the foothills. And uh, look, both of these events, of course, we had a, a little bit of flooding rain. It wasn't major floods like the last couple of years, but it was enough to get the river up and rising. They're running a bit dirty. And I don't know anyone who's better at catching bass in the dirty water than you. And your shop is right in the middle of the dirty water bass and country, mate. So I thought now would be a good time to go through um, some of the must-haves if you're going to be fishing dirty water. If we've got guys coming up from uh, from Hunter Valley, for instance, that aren't used to catching fish in dirty water or guys that are Somerset specialists or Boon Doomer experts, um, what are they going to need in their box? I want you to go through a bit of a must-have list for dirty water bass and in the Richmond. So the first one's really an no-brainer. They're made like about half an hour away. Uh, Glenn and Sue, obviously, Bassman Spinner Boats. Big supporter of ABT, have been for a long time. Forever. If you don't have a Bassman Spinner Boat tied on this weekend, you're a bloody fool. Um, look, colours, they can vary. Everyone's got their own sort of colour. Um, I'm a bit of a... Just, I'm a bit of a Spinner Boat fan, as you can see there. Most of those are the old Bassmans. But I think, either dark or light, um, Look, colour 18, 25 are obviously um, some of the go-tos. That one there, that's a half ounce um, shorty. Anything in that lighter colour, um, or if you're going to not go light, go the total opposite, go a dark. Just that contrast. Um, yep. As we know, dirty water, darker lures, it contrasts better. Doesn't make sense, but that's just how, how it works. Um, my recommendation is don't fish light spinner baits. Don't worry about your quarter ounce. I wouldn't even really bother with three eight. Um, I'd just stick to your half ounce stuff. Um, and the beauty of uh, the those shorties is they're a little bit more compact as well. So you've got the heavier weight and more compact. So look, we are going to have a lot of flow. Um, whether the tide will be pushing back against it by next week, I'm not sure. But because we have got a lot of water in the river, there's a lot of current there. When it does push, it pushes. So... Fishing a quarter ounce spinnerbait is just not going to get down there. It's just not going to be productive. Your lure is not going to be in the right spot for long enough. So uh, my recommendation, definitely that half ounce. You could get away with the three eight on the slack of the tide, but I'll be definitely having that uh, half ounce just to get you throw in. You want to get down to that snag before you drift past it. So tell us, um, tell us how the bass behave. Let's wind it back a little bit. And uh, the bass, when there's strong current flow, do they get right up on the edges? hunting stuff or do they bunker down in the snags do we have to get down in the snags to them or they come to us um that's a really good question if if we get a little bit more rain they'll get back up hunting um i don't think we are and it'll be too uh, long after the rain so most of the drains and all that are going to have stopped and that sort of thing and any like, yep. water coming in through the grass would have stopped so when it's flowing in like not i'm not even talking about drain when you have water just coming off the bank they'll get up in amongst the grass and they'll feed but because we're sort of, the time the comp comes around, we like a week and a half, almost two weeks into the dirty water since the, the um, river rose. 
they're going to really sort of bunker down. Um, this is just where you need to use your brain. Forget your sounder. Use your brain. Like, hey, there's an eddy over there. There's a current break. Probably a good spot for a bass. Um, but, yeah, even some of the midwater structure that's sitting out, um, you can see there might be a little stick sticking out. Obviously, there's a big tree underneath. Even that, even if it's in roaring current, because um, they've been copping and pounding, they'll just tuck in any little eddy. doesn't need to be much, like the size of your tackle box sort of thing. They'll sit in it. Um, yep. So that's going to be a big thing, just looking for those ba little back eddies and that sort of thing. Um, look, th there's plenty of bait. I just drove back yesterday afternoon from the beach dew fishing, and there's mullet and stuff just jumping everywhere. So the river's still alive. Like, it's not – the fish eat. That's what I think a lot of people just forget is, like, if it rains on us for two weeks, we still got to eat. We're hungry. So, um, and another thing you got to remember is the Richmond River is always like this. They're used to it. It's not like, say, down south, some of the cleaner systems when it floods, they all shut down. Our fish live in this. So they're sort of just used to it. So, yep. uh, um, you just got to just got to fish those noisy lures. Hence, your spinner bait is an absolute cracker. Um, vibration, a little bit of flash there. I'm not really a big one on the blades. I didn't sort of mention that. But most of them are just tan, and most of them are just whatever Glenn makes. I don't really have a preference. I just grab yep. a gold, silver, gold. doesn't really matter. As long as it makes cool. noise, it's going to drag them in. Yep, that's all it is, mate. Just a bit of noise and just vibration. Um, you don't realise how much bass just hunt by vibration. Like, if you stuck your head in the river there at the moment, you wouldn't see your nose, end of your nose. So they solely rely on that vibration coming through the water. That's great. We got the spinner baits packed. What else are we going to have to throw in there, or, or indeed buy from uh, Casino Outdoors when we're there for the briefing? When, um, when, yes. when atomic stuffing is full of free pizzas, what are we going to yes. be buying off the wall? Yeah, um, look, I'm a frog fan. Um, I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a frog. I don't know if you can see there, but I love me, I love me frog fishing. Um, doesn't really matter. I don't really care on colour. It's just you've just got to have a frog now. The reason behind that, it's not because they like to eat frogs here. It's because you can put that lure where you can't put anything else. And at the moment, that's going to be key. Um, those eddies that I've talked about where you want to throw your spinnerbait, they might be where you can't put a spinnerbait because you're going to get it tangled up on a bush. So pure and simply, it's just a frog, just that reaction, just to put it somewhere where you can't put anything else. Um, yeah. My preference is a dog kick a curly. I absolutely love those things. Rig them on a 1-0 gamma. Um, Worm hook, you just can't really go wrong, and that that'll be in my hand a bit. Just just pretty instantly, just putting it where you can't put other lures. Um, if you'd put a spinnerbait in there, they'd eat that too. It's just yeah, and just not being able to get hooked up on the bush. Tell us, um, for people that haven't done much frog fishing, tell us how savagely a bass eats a frog. Like it's not like it's not like a brim where they just come up and suck at it, is it? It's a detonation. Yeah, and it's cool. Actually, I saw um, probably a month or so ago, I actually saw two chasing it down. You see, like, the dorsals come out of the water and they start hunting it down, and they're like almost greyhound fighting for it. It's, yeah, it's pretty cool, especially um, when you're moving the bait. It's like a buzz bait sort of bite. Like, it's not like you're just sitting it still like a popper or something like that. They actually are hunting it down to build it. So, yeah, it's a pretty cool strike. Yep. Okay, we've got our spinner baits and our frogs in there. What else is uh, what else is Joey going to have in his box with this dirty water bassin? Well, Joey's going to dive into his little prototype box. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see in there, but that's my personal little fizzer box that I've conglomerated over the last few years. Well, there's a couple of little secrets there I probably shouldn't have in there. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Everyone hits rewind. <laughs> I'll have all the lure collectors chase me. Where is that? I haven't seen that before. But um, I'll just have a fizzer on, mate. Oh, look. They just are a proven performer here on the river. Um, they do so well for me, and it's just a noise. Yet again, it's just a noise thing. I never really do well on our river when it's clean with the fizzer. Um, I just put a video up the other day, me and the young bloke in the last club comp um, over on my YouTube channel, if anyone wants to check that out to get some tips for next weekend. But, um, like, we fished along, and it was absolute mud, and I put that thing on, and then almost jumping out of the water into the boat to eat it. So it's just a noise. It's it's just a noise thing, bringing them in, making them aware that, hey, there's something over here. Um, and sometimes they're a little bit cautious about it. They'll come over, and they won't necessarily buff it straight away. You'll see them swirl on it, like a barrow might do, like a little bit of a swirl, and he's having a look at it, and then next thing you know, you twitch it, and they absolutely smash it. So... Um, I've got a heap of them in at the shop at the moment on the wall, so yeah, I'll definitely pick, be picking up a few fizzers. Um, even like the guys that don't fish that sort of thing, whopper poppers, um, the same sort of thing, anything like that. Um, 
pompadours, just noisy baits, yep. just trying to just draw the fish in. That's that's all you need, just for them to find it. How good is it when you get all the dam guys coming down to fish the rivers and all of these baits that they probably don't throw much in a lake because they're too noisy and because the water's clear and because you need the finesse, you get to give them a run in a river. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like, it doesn't really matter. Like, they, they're not that fussy. It's just you need to make them aware that something's there. Like, I could throw a Coke can in with a treble on it and pop it, and they'd come over and look at it. It's just, it, it's just, yeah, that whole vibration thing, um, just making the fish that are aware that there is something there, might be injured, let's go check it out. And the fish do work hard in this water. Like, you'll notice... Um, I reckon the last week the fish would have lost a little bit of condition. Um, just sort of, you know, your pre-spawn though, but they, they've been, they've got to swim. They're swimming hard. They, they don't just get to sit still a lot. So um, yeah. when they do find a feed, they're pretty keen to come and smash it. Well, you know, the best thing about the river tournaments, uh, Fire Fish Limit on the app, they can be as skinny as they like. You can get the same same uh, derived weight for them. So uh, bring on the big long 50s, I reckon. Yeah, I'll, I'll be happy with just seeing some fish. I'll be stoked. <laughs> <laughs> um, while we're talking about tackle, I was just thinking about this one before off camera. If you're coming from a dam or down south or something like that, leave your spin rods in the car. Leave your little six pound setups in the car. You're just going to disappoint yourself. Like there's that with the flow that it's around. It's not even about just the big bass. It's like you hook a fish in that current and he starts ripping the other way. He's just they're just going to bust you off. So. Yeah. Leave your light leader at home. You can get away with your lighter braid, but 15, 20 pound, there's absolutely no need to fish lighter than that because I should be telling you this because I'm doing myself out of some dollars at the shop, but you're just going to lose lures. Like it's just, it's, and then you go home, you've got a bad taste in your mouth. Oh, I busted off all them lures, but you could fish 60 pound leader in this water and the fish are still going to eat it. They could not give a toss. Yeah. That's great advice, Joey, because, uh, yeah, finesse does not matter when it's uh, when it's dirty and they can't see it anyway. So uh, I'm, I'm fishing 25-pound leader through my little light frog and rod. Like, you need the light rod to cast the frog, but just tie something heavy on the end and you just lock up and pull and you're pretty pretty well right. That's awesome. Um, I suppose the last question I've got for you is, uh, you know, for the guys, again, that are coming from out of town, you were saying that not all the river may play. T tell us about the, the stretches of river they should be looking at. Should people be looking downstream, upstream, middle stretches, or do they just need to find the right water on the day? It's going to change a lot in a week. Um, that's a great question. I was thinking about this before. I think when we look at a lot of events in, say, the States, elite events, you know, like through practice it's high flooded, all the grass is flooded, they fish it up in people's backyards, and as the tournament progresses, the water gradually drops back down, and by the end of the tournament they're fishing pretty stable water. I think we're going to see that a lot. I think uh, it dropped about two and a half metres just last night, the river. So I think if we get a good stable week of weather, the water's pretty well going to be back to normal level. It is going to be dirty, but like we said, who cares? The fish, the fish don't give a toss about that. Um, I think you probably the very, very top reaches that I really like to fish, um, unfortunately, are going to be like a rapid up there. So that's probably not going to really play. I'll definitely be having a little poke around up there to have a look, but um, that's going to be tough. Um, the bottom end is the bottom end of the river is obviously going to clean up first. None of it's going to be clean, but that's with these big tides we spoke about yesterday, big high tides in the night time. It'll soon suck it in and out. And it's amazing how quick it does actually just lose that real dark brown muddy color. Um, and then that's not a thing about all the fish to swim to that section of the river. It just means the fish can find your lure and your, your presentation a little bit easier and they might be a little bit more willing to eat. So um, definitely, I, yeah, I think it's just find the right water in the day. I'm not going to say definitely here because if we get another 25 mil of rain, it's going yeah, to change. It shift it around. Yep. Um, one thing while we're talking about the river is just like you, everyone's just got to be careful. Like don't be buddy on your phone or chatting to your mate. Just watch where you're going. Like, Two bass boats pass, and even as wide as the river is, like there's that much crap in the river at the moment. It, and this is prior to this rain. Like, yeah, um, it, you definitely just need to be alert. Um, and a lot of it is a little bit sort of just bobbing under the surface because it's been in the water for so long. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, just keep in mind, guys, when you come to them narrow corners, you might be up the top of the casino arm or the Wilson. Just just be a little bit more cautious than usual. Because if you come around a corner and there's a big log and you go to swerve and you end up in someone else's boat, it's probably not. No, it's a look. You always got to drive to suit the conditions. Richmond and Clarence always got plenty of debris in them, so there's yeah. always a safe speed to go. And uh, most of the time, that's not flat out. So it's uh, about my speed. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> So, no, look, I'm sure everyone's been good at taking it safely. No, Nobody wants to lose a leg or a prop or an ear of a prop, so uh, it all costs money. So I'm sure everyone will uh, drive safely, and uh, we look forward to catching up with you at the briefing um, where it's the Atomic event, Atomic buying the pizzas. You will have all of these lures on the shop if you're struggling on the day. Joey is going to be the one who's full of advice and got the lures there to get it done. So, mate, I uh, look forward to you hosting us there, mate, and uh, good to see you back in the saddle for another Bass Pro event, if it, if it is only one for the year. Yeah, I, I actually was pretty keen to fish the Clarence, but uh, we had the houseboat over Easter and I was actually on the water inside the pre-fish band, so uh, that's just the way it worked. But uh, no, mate, really appreciate you guys uh, calling past the store. and um, Like the sponsors, uh, naming sponsors Atomic, we have a stack of cracking Atomic gear in the uh, in the shop as well, so call in. Even you get my hooks, it's all under that same sort of band with Frogly, so yep. um, call in, bit of sponsor calm, I never heard anyone, you know that more than anyone. You betcha. Thanks, Joey. We'll see you in a week. Thanks a So there you go. Uh, good on you, Michael Stark. He always likes putting a feed or a bit of extra prize money or something on for competitors at his naming round. And uh, that Richmond River round, it's up the river a little bit, but uh, Frogley's offshore. Their headquarters is all the way back down there in Ballina. So uh, good to see him looking after his uh, the ba his backyard events, I suppose. Um, remember tonight we got some prizes. Well, we have a prize. This, tell us where you're from. Um, throw it in the comments, either YouTube or Facebook. It's uh, pretty soon we'll be uh, we'll be drawing that. Uh, big shout out also, I see uh, Jason Patterson, you're in the comments there saying that uh, you're doing your first event as a non-boater at Richmond. Well done, mate. You'll enjoy it. You'll get paired with a couple of great guys and uh, you might catch a limit. You might catch a donut. Personally, I caught, I think, two fish in my first ever ABT event. So uh, anything you catch is going to be great. So uh, really hope you enjoy it. If there are any non-boaters sitting on the fence thinking, oh, I would really love to go and fish those, uh, those two upcoming bass events, we do have non-boater spots in both of those. You can call the office tomorrow. You can call Kim on 1800 228 244. She, will, uh, she can get you in and talk you through it on the phone. So if you're sitting on the fence and want to have a crack, that is exactly where you can go. Um, we have a, a third story tonight. Uh, that is Braden Shu. He's a two-time in a row grand final winner and he's currently leading the 13 Fishing Bass Pro Series Angler of the Year. We caught up with him a little bit earlier today. Here he is. Grand final champion, not one, but two years in a row. And I remember, Braden Shu, you telling me last year that you're going to have a fair crack at stealing the AOY trophy of Matthew Langford this year. And lo and behold, I look at the AOY table and shit's getting real. Yeah, it definitely is getting real, isn't it? I think I, um, I might have said that in jest last year to you, but um, it seems to be coming true, which is really good. I know Coney's not far off it. Um, some pretty solid finishes in uh, in Victoria have got me sitting pretty well, so I'm pretty happy with that. And and look, that's uh, Victoria was always sort of strong for you, but you know you, maybe you didn't expect a couple of second places out of there. But you're coming into some river rounds, and let's face it, you've won a grand final on the Clarence River there before. And uh, and the little birdies told me that you've actually snuck up at Easter to have a little bit of a pre-fish. So mate, you're you're taking this gig seriously now. Yeah, well, I, I guess I'm I'm in the position now to um, to have a proper crack at it. So it's it's just a drive up the highway, up the M1 now. So it's what six six and a half hours up there. So kind of makes sense to go up for a bit of a look. Um, long weekend, just worked out really well. So um, yeah, like I, you may as well give it a good go. I reckon. Why not? I, I, I agree totally. If you've got a start like that, uh, it's definitely worth trying to follow up and giving it all of your effort. Like we all, we all do well occasionally just turning up and getting lucky, but uh, 
hey, let's get skillful, not lucky. We can control our destiny a little bit more. Now, tell exactly it, right. there was a lot of uh, willing yourself into winning things last year, and I'm, I'm sort of a sponsor karma guy, but uh, tell us about this manifestation that you've been going through. Mm, yeah, it's um, it's good. It's potent in the room right now. It's great. <laughs> I um, When I got the call up from you last week about coming on ABT Live, I said, name a time, name a place. It doesn't bother me because every time I've been on, there's been good things happen afterwards. So I am more than happy to come on. If, if this could be midnight right now and I'd still be wide awake talking to you, Steve. <laughs> but no, I think you've got to back yourself, mate. Like, I, like I've like uh, I've kind of probably said a few things at risk of, of being uh, of teased from some uh, co-anglers, but um, no, I'm, I'm happy it's worked out. I mean, I've put a lot of hard work into it as well. I can't really um, throw that kind of a way so I've, I've put a lot of time a lot of effort into into pre-fishing into venues into into bass i should say as well so yeah um i would like to say a lot of it is manifesting but i'd like to say there's a bit of um a bit of backing myself behind it as well well a lot of a lot of companies have the slogans all about making your own luck you know fishing is a lucky sport but the lucky ones work really hard and that's, that's exactly that's, right. that's how it works now let's talk exactly. now I don't, I don't want you to give away all your secrets from the pre-fish but i think the interesting part about your pre-fish was it happened over easter but since we've had a bit of rain come through the systems mm. and it uh, maybe uh maybe turn the arenas upside down a little bit how much of what you learned in the pre-fish do you think is going to be relevant now in the tournament or are you gonna to have to wing it a little bit yeah i think it's it's going to be different. Like I, so we went up on the on the Friday. We fished Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Fished Clarence on Friday, um, Richmond Saturday, Sunday. Because I haven't done, well, I should say the last time I was at the Richmond was I think the twenty nineteen event there that we did a round back there. So, um, so it's been quite a few years since I've been there. Clarence, I'm really familiar with the Clarence, but I still wanted to drop in just to kind of check it out. I was there probably four or five weeks ago. Got a bit of an idea of where they were, but. Coming into winter, they do move a lot right now, getting a bit cooler. So I wanted to kind of get a bit more of a check on them. Um, I saw a video, Coney sent it to me the other day. There's a fair bit of water through Grafton. So, I mean, it's all up in the air now. Um, but yeah, I really wanted to focus on the Richmond there. We, we pulled up to the Richmond going between Woodburn and, and Korokai when we got in in the afternoon on Friday. And it was just brown water, full trees floating down the river. And I'm just like, you just got to be kidding me here. We're reports that we've heard that it's really tough and it's not going to be that enjoyable but um i don't know at risk of at risk of getting my hopes up or everybody else's hopes up we fished it and we fished it really well there's a lot of really good fish there um yep. for the weekend we found some we found some good little honey holes um but again this whole rain thing a lot of water that's come through i'm not I'm not super worried by it, but obviously there's concern there. I think that there's we're, it's going to be another pre-fish again, put it that way. So. Yeah, that's it. It's it's the it's the what adjustments do you need to make to stay in touch with those fish? And and look, yep. there's one thing that I tell people. You know, I talk to a lot of people that are a bit sort of worried about the up the dirty water and and what people have been saying. The first thing I tell them is you don't believe anything that any fellow competitor tells mm. you in a pre-fish. It's like I've heard lots of misery yeah. stories about saying, wait a sec, you caught, you said you caught nothing. Oh, no, I whacked him. I was just, you know, just still alive. Yeah, exactly. You know, Very it's coy about sandbagging, everything. coyness, whatever you call it. It's like you've just got to you've got to accept the fact that the fish are in there and if you put the lure in front of them, they're going to bite. So uh, yep. so I think whoever, you know, I think it's going to be a very important pre-fish day. Whoever lands on them in the pre-fish and is able to refine down a pattern is going to sort of take a lot of the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle and put them together pretty quickly, I think. So, uh, yeah, yeah, so I how, how does, you know, obviously you want good points out of these events. How much do you fish for points and how much do you fish to win? Well, I mean, you've you've got to be oh, you, nobody's saying that they're not gonna go there to win. You know what I mean? Like everybody's going to win at the end of the day. It's kind of but then obviously the backup to that is points. So if you can't win, then you wanna do the best as possible to be able to get the points. Um, like we said at the start, I'm in a really good position now. So points are probably more um yep. more crucial to me right now. But the I guess the issue is the the last what three years like Lang has had what was it on his on his win last year he had two or three two or three AO or round wins mm -hmm. so like yep. you can't just feel like I'm, I'm going to be happy with the top six and and that'll push me through to to becoming AOY because that's that's un unfortunately not the case Mitchell Cohn's got a first and uh is it a third or a fourth I think from Victoria so he's one point behind me I've got two seconds so it's it kind of it's hard to say but it's you've, you've got to be in the top three and that's in its own is a big feat, you know what I mean? So it's going to be, um, 
yeah, I'm going to be going for points, but obviously the win, I'd love a win. I haven't gotten a round win. I've gotten um, the grand final wins. Come close to some opens as well, but I've never actually gotten a round win. So I really want to, um, I really want to knuckle one down if I can. So it's going to be I don't, I don't want to use up all my karma, Steve, because <laughs> I want, uh, I want the grand final again. I've got to go three for three. So I, I think I don't think there's any worry of the karma running out. I don't think there's like a finite amount of it. I think you've just got to when they say channel and karma, it just keeps on coming through, doesn't it? It's like oh, apparently, yeah. It's not like when you were a kid and your mum thought you only had one litre of blood in you and every drop you lost you were never gonna get back again. You know, this is it, it can keep coming. So look, it's I'm really excited that it's a real race this year. You know, both in the brim mm. and the bass, there's probably four or five guys that are if they do well in these two events, especially these middle two rounds. They're going to come into the final two rounds up in Queensland with a, a bit of momentum and uh, and every chance of seal it off. So, you know, I know we all we all love Langers, but I tell you what, we all love is to get that AOI trophy off him. Somewhere. Yeah, well, that's the that's the it's the prestige we know why. So, I mean, someone's got to get it, and someone will get it. And that, and let's re- remind the audience what the prize is for Angler of the Year. What is it? Yeah, yeah, trophy. Trophy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I mean. Holding the trophy up. That's it. Holding the trophy up. So, and and. Our theory behind that is if you won Angler of the Year, you've probably done pretty well during the year anyway. You've probably won yeah, 10000 yeah. bucks worth of prize money and prizes and all that sort of stuff. So same for Brim, same for Bass. I think the Barra is the highest paid Angler of the Year stuff because sometimes they win a couple of rods or something mm. to go with it, you know. But again, it's, un- it's only token. People do it for the pride. And uh, look, I'm going to ask you a question that I, that I asked Joey. I'm going to say if you only had to fish this event with three lures... What what three would you be packing? I think I've asked you this sort of question before, mm, but uh, if you were yeah. limited to three rods and three lures, what would they be on this event? Three rods, three lures. Well, I wouldn't be throwing a spin because I'm not really drawn to spin rods at the start of things, especially in a river. I'll be throwing bait casts. So to be honest, that's a that's going to be a tough one. Um, this is an unscripted question, by the way, for the audience. I'm just hitting. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm just trying to think what the best thing is. Like, I think to be honest, I think I probably said the same things last time. I think the last time I was on this was before Boonduma. Yeah. Um, it will be a, a Steve spinnerbait, dirty water, bit of vibration. You can't really go wrong. I've done yep. my best. Well, the best bites, the best fish I've caught on spinnerbaits have always been in the Clarence. So it would probably be a Steve spinnerbait. Yep. Um, and that'll be on one of the new 23 Tatula rods and one of the um. The new Tatula reel is a really good all-round, all, all, uh, all-round combo there. So uh, that'd be number one. I'll do a chatterbait as well. Again, I can't really go wrong with a chatterbait of Steve's cover chatter um, in a three-eighth of an ounce. Just throwing that to edges, throwing that to um, to little current points, lay downs, everything like that. It all works. Um, and then probably the last one would be a top order of some description. I did throw a fair bit of a popper um at clarence but i think that was more because i just kind of wanted to but it will be some type of a a top water whether that be a buzz bait a frog um i'm having a lot of success all a couple of weeks ago when i was at the clarence uh probably five or six weeks ago um had a lot of success on my new big kick curlies uh they they cast a lot better on bait cast so you can skip yep. them up really really well so it'll probably be somewhere in those kind of realms but there'll probably be a couple of deviants from there but um yeah, it'd, it'd be those would be the top three, and I, I know for a fact I done my rods the other week, and they they're all there. So <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that, they'll and definitely look, be on the back. Yeah. I think I think what a lot of the guys are increasingly uh, loving going to rivers rather than lakes is the fact that it's not finesse. It's mm. casting tackle, noisy lures, aggressive yeah. strikes. It's like you know a bit of wild wild west compared to throwing your little jig head with your cut down slider on the back. You know, yeah, <laughs> in exactly Glenmore right. in crystal clear water. You know, the, what do they call it? The gulping where you're winding yeah, it up real slow through the fish. Yeah, ain't no uh, gulping going to be happening. No, that's exactly right. So I think yeah, the I'm a very power fisherman guy. Like I'll just rather throw and just like I work pretty hard, pretty quick down banks. So it's good. Rivers suit me really well, but at the same time, when you do slow down, you can still catch some really good fish. So it's like you just got to find the right areas, what they want to bite on to a point, and then you can kind of go from there. So, like the other week when I was at the Richmond, I I caught someone like the little dice, like of all things, like those those OSP dice that you yep. know are going going around America and Japan and everything like that. Because I'm like, I just want to catch one on it, so I put it on and I got one. I'm like, oh, there, there you go. go. <laughs> now i've got one final question for you um assuming you do well out of this and you're still in the race uh leading into the last two events i know you've done pretty well on somerset in the past got a bit of experience there what do you like on wyvernhoe uh, yeah wyvernhoe next question i've never fished wyvernhoe in my whole life 
I've driven past it many, many times. Somerset, I've got a soft spot for Somerset. Um, I don't know. There's just good fish in there. Like it's every time I go, I work, I, I always progress my fishing at Somerset in some way, shape or form. Um, I love going there. I'm, I, I'm really liking how it's transitioning more so onto edge bites now. Um, that's really, really cool because there's some absolute donkeys that come off the edge now. Um, but Wyvernhoe, I'm a, I'm a little bit concerned about Wyvernhoe. If I was to have a throwaway this year, it probably would be Wyvernhoe. Um, but saying that, I am excited to get on there because I really want to do some like deep cranking. I really want to try and do all these other things at yep. Wyvernhoe. So, um, yeah, I'm I think I'm that seeing a really interesting sure end of the year. Like, I think yeah, if we get on there, um, we've seen the last event we ran on Wyvernhoe was a, a, a Australian Open. And it was one day on Somerset, one on Wyvernhoe, and Maddie Langford was strutting into that event like, I am going to win this. I had an awesome pre-fish. I'm going to catch like five kilos in my first five casts. And he donated mm. for the day, basically. So it's like, it's one of those lakes that it can change like this. So, yeah, you know, I think that element of variability coming into the final part of the AOI race is going to make it a really interesting race. I'm glad it's an interesting race this year. I'm glad that you've made the time in the daytime. We're not going to make you get up at midnight, mate, to come and visit us. Mm, and, I uh, would. I and, would. Uh, <laughs> we know you do it, and uh, and I really hope your hard work is is rewarded because uh, not all of us got down there for a pre-fish, and uh, it's good to see the commitment going on, mate. You do the miles, you get the smiles, I say. So let's hope exactly that it's right. uh, good. Just remember, for all the people watching, you're going to be able to watch the live scoreboards on abt.org.au. It's an app tournament, so both days of both events, you should have pretty good coverage, and uh, you can check out how Braden and the rest of the field are going. So uh, I know your family and friends will be... Uh, updating that a lot they will be i'm sure if i'm sitting in a good spot i'll get a message from tucker it always happens so we'll just have to wait and see i'm hoping for the message there you go mate. all right appreciate you joining us mate and uh we'll see you up there yeah thanks steve so there you go three uh three good opinions on what's going to go down in the next uh in the next uh week and a half when we're down in northern new south wales and of course remember straight after that we've got the uh the albany round of the Brim ABT over in WA. So uh, a lot of things will be happening by the time two weeks has turned up. Uh, all the AOY races will be in a different spot indeed. Um, tonight, winner of the tackle pack here, Jack Foster, who commented on YouTube. He's from Honeywood in Tassie. And if you're from Tassie, Jack, geez, those duo uh, Realis ADSPs are going to do good for you down there. They did awesome when we were down in Tassie last month. So uh, there you go. Nicole's picked that Jack Foster. Send us a message in Facebook, actually to ABT uh, with your address, etc., and we will get those in the mail to you tomorrow. Thank you to everyone who's joined us tonight. Um, we're going to go and start getting packed for the Bass Tournaments because they're going to be with us in a couple of days. Remember, the live scoreboards on abt.org.au. Nicole's waving to you from behind the thing there. Hope she's feeling better tomorrow. And uh, that's all it from us. So we'll see you from on the river at the Clarence on the weekend.